Hello everyone, back to today's first video. We're going to have a look at the e 30 day look ahead model for today's uh, first video. So we're going to go through the next four weeks, taking us into the uh, second half of June. Um, looking at temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies, we can't show you heights or mean sea level pressure, but you can get a rough idea of what the model is forecasting from its temperature and uh, precipitation anomaly. So that's what we're going to do for today's uh, first video. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon on the homepage, we'll have your regular week to 10 day video update uh, with all our features. Of course, we had a day off yesterday, had the historic, but yeah, that seemed to go down um, quite well. So uh, I think getting back to normal um, today, and I'll bring you up to date with uh, week to 10 day outlook um, in today's second video update later on this afternoon. Right, so at the Hungarian Met Office, uh, with this, big thank you to them for uh, supplying the charts, and uh, let's go with it. So I'm going to begin by having a look at the temperature anomaly for week one for our forecast period. It's week 22 for the year. Uh, quite a lot going on, actually, across Europe. So uh, northern parts of Europe looking quite cold or quite cool this week, much of Scandinavia coming out uh, with below average temperature anomalies, as much as three to six degrees across some parts of Norway and Sweden. Uh, then we've got Scotland also coming out uh, a little bit cooler than average. Go further south though, England and Wales actually looking quite warm. Uh, warm than average for England and Wales and some parts of Southern Ireland also coming out warm than average. Northern France comes out warm than average. And on the other hand, southeastern parts of France coming out cooler than average and much of Italy and down into the central basin of the Mediterranean cooler than average as well. Spain and Portugal, large part of that uh, significantly hotter than average average, although around the Mediterranean coast of, uh, of um, eastern Spain, it actually looks quite cool. And then going up the eastern side of Europe, very warm there, so kind of like from Turkey, Greece, and um, the Black Sea northwards up towards the uh, west of Russia, significantly hotter than average there, 3 to 6 degrees. In fact, some parts of uh, Greece and Turkey coming out 6 to 10 degrees above average, really, really hot in the far east and southeast of Europe this week. So I suppose generally you can say a bit of a freeway split. Very hot in the far east. Um, away from Scotland, probably a little bit above average in the extreme west. And then in between, it looks generally cooler than average. Uh, week, uh, week one precipitation, again, taking us from the 27th of May to the uh, 2nd of June, looking like this. So quite unsettled in the far northwestern corner. So northern parts of the UK, uh, Ireland, and then up to Scandinavia. Generally, it's a bit wet and average up there. Presumably, we've got an Atlantic influence coming through there. Then, uh, then much of central western Europe, actually drier than average. So most of Germany, low countries, France... Um, um, England and Wales down to Spain and Portugal on the dry of an average side here. Looks like we've got some high pressure building up from the southwest through this area, perhaps an extension from the Azores High. Over on the eastern side of Europe and through the central basin of the Mediterranean, looks a little bit more unsettled. So generally quite a dismal outlook for Italy, cool and unsettled uh, for Italy and very wet seemingly over the Adriatic into the Balkans. Again, the far east and southeast of Europe, where it's very hot, also very dry. So it's really uh, real um, summer conditions underway now uh, this week for Greece and for Turkey up to the Black Sea. Uh, and I'm going to go through to uh, week two in a second. So we're just waiting for page to update. There we go. So we go through to week two, which of course week 23 for uh, this year. And uh, it looks like this. So again, the very far northwest of Europe, this will take us from the 3rd to the 9th of June. Uh, very far northwest of Europe, generally looking a little bit uh, on the cooler side. So for much of Ireland, large part of the UK, and then up to Scandinavia. We're kind of like average to uh, a little bit cooler than average. And also in this central part of the Med, so from like uh, the Balearic Islands, you know, over to Italy and the Adriatic there, it's generally uh, a little bit on the cool and average side. Those are the exceptions to the rule, because the rest of Europe looking very warm, if not hot, this week. So we have Spain and Portugal again coming out really warm. France, Germany coming out really warm. I mean, over to Poland, really warm there. And then the hottest conditions, again, remain in the extreme east, southeast of Europe, where, again, we're seeing widely 
three to six degrees above average one or two places close to the black sea coming out six to ten degrees above average really really hot over in the extreme east and southeast of europe as we go into the early part of june precipitation wise looking like this so uh, again a little bit on the unsettled side but very far north of europe scandinavia and into scotland a bit uh, a little bit wetter than average through there perhaps still looking la uh, largely drier than average on this western side um otherwise close to average really a little bit wetter than average perhaps down in the southeast maybe indicated chance some big thunderstorms uh, particularly around the balkans being triggered by the cooler temperatures that we have through the central part of the med and um, that extreme heat that got in the ex in the far east and southeast of europe that might trigger some big storms for places like the balkans uh, week 3, week 24th of the year is the uh, 10th through to the 16th of June. Most parts of Europe are going uh, warmer than average through this middle part of the month. So um, down in the far south through Mediterranean, temperature anomalies there close to average. Some parts of Italy, Corsica, Sardinia, close to or a little bit below average. Much of them are generally close to average. North of the Alps, it's warmer. So we see widely, again, temperatures kind of like uh, going to, um, one to three degrees above average. A few areas, particularly around the Baltic Sea, for example, uh, coming out around three to six degrees above average in this week. Much warmer across Scandinavia uh, as well. Uh, UK and Ireland, actually, we're one of the cooler places in Europe. Those southern parts of England are uh, a little bit milder than average, but generally it's close to average with precipitation for the UK and I notice Iceland is also looking pretty warm. We don't often talk about Iceland because they're partly covered by uh, the um, by the uh, the uh, timestamp there, but uh, it does look a bit warm than average up in Iceland too. Uh, and then the uh, precipitation. I mean, well, we're week three, so things are starting to, starting to weaken. The signal is weakening uh, at this point. Also, a little bit wet and average in this southeastern corner. Still, it's quite dry across. Uh, it's becoming quite dry across uh, Scandinavia, and still looks quite dry for western parts of Russia. Otherwise, again, very weak signals. You always see that with these week three precipitation anomalies, week three and four precipitation anomalies. So, very difficult to glean much information there precipitation wise for the middle of june i suspect they're uh, probably going drier though for much of europe it looks like high pressure is building up being most warmer than average temperature anomalies widely across the continent and then we go through to week four it's week 25 for uh, the year it's uh, week four for our forecast time frame it takes us from the 17th through 23rd of june so uh this week is looking close to average with temperature anomalies across central and western parts of uh, europe um so uk ireland much of germany low countries france spain portugal close to average uh we see that scandinavia generally a little bit above average with temperature anomalies and then this eastern side of europe still looking quite warm actually uh, even then. So seemingly central western parts of Europe are cooling down in this uh, week with the heat being shunted over towards eastern parts of Europe. Precipitation wise, a few hints of northern blocking here actually. Uh, we're in the second half of June now of course, so not really what, what you want to be seeing as you're going in towards high summer, but uh, it looks dry on average there, kind of like in the Norwegian Sea and going over towards Norway and uh, Sweden, so I would have I would have thought that hints at some high pressure sitting around here, and then it's wetter than average, kind of like through the southern southwestern parts of Europe. But hints have been a bit wetter than average. These are very weak signals because it's week four. Um, but for places like the Bay of Biscay, some parts of France, it's a bit wetter than average, some parts of Portugal. So you would think there's probably a normal blocking signal and maybe a trough of low pressure sitting underneath it across central western parts of Europe, which isn't what you want to be seeing as you're moving in towards the latter stages of June, of course. Um, otherwise, really weak signals. And one thing that does show up, I suppose, is that much of Mediterranean looks a little bit wetter than average, really, right way from Portugal over here to Greece over here. It does look a little bit wetter than average. These are very weak signals. And I say northern parts of Europe a little bit uh, drier than average there. 
So uh, that's it for this week's uh, look ahead from the ECFF 30 day uh, model. It looks as though a bit of mixed bag, really, I think, showing up here. Week by week changes. So uh, no particular weather type dominating the whole of June, which is quite interesting because it will imply a relatively changeable uh, sort of month. Even if it's not overly unsettled, there's no particularly wet signal here. Uh, to be honest, not continuously wet anyway, but it does look quite changeable with uh, each individual week showing a rather different temperature and precipitation anomaly profile. So up and down with temperatures a bit uh, and sometimes drier, sometimes warmer conditions, which is a change on last year because last year through June, it was very, very consistent for hot and dry weather, not just in the UK, but many parts of, uh, of Europe suffer from or experience hot dry conditions from beginning to end during June uh, last year. This is looking a little bit different, Miss June, I have to say, a little bit more changeable, not as consistent with the high temperatures and uh, at times rather unsettled some places too. Right, so we'll do it over again uh, next week, and that's going to take us to the end of June then, uh, I think, next week's update. Um, come back later on this afternoon when we've got your regular week to 10 day video update, uh, and uh, we'll bring you up to date with uh, what's going on with the, uh, with the models in today's second video update. Right, that's all for now though, and thanks for watching.